Peace and blessings to everyone watching this video. This is five signs that you are a chosen one. Okay. Um, I already had a video on this talking about a sign that you are chosen, but now I have five signs. People tell me when I make my chosen ones video, they're like, you know, well, how do we know we're chosen ones? So this video is for you. Okay. And this is not an order, but I feel like this, this number one is probably one of the most important things to know that you are a chosen one. All right. Many are called if you are chosen. So number one will be, uh, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, which means that you can no longer live a certain way that you lived before you were chosen, before you were called. Um, like I noticed, like before I first was uh, received the Holy Spirit, and before God called me, it's like God was testing me, because we all know before you get to the next level in life, you will be tested to see if you're ready to be called, if you're ready to be chosen. No one would just wakes up and becomes chosen. You know, you got to go through war. You got to show God that you're ready, and you know He's gonna test you. God tries the hearts. Excuse the background noise. I'm out. Right now. So, yeah. Okay. So. God tested me and uh, I did notice like when I fornicated, when I watched porn or like sin pretty much, you know, or masturbate, stuff like that. I noticed like afterwards, like I would feel that conviction. I would feel that guilt, that sorrow, because I know that I'm, you know, like even though I didn't know at the time, but like I knew that this is not something that God wants me to do. And I didn't even know what sin was at the time. Like I had no idea what sin was. And every time, I'm telling you, every time I got done watching porn, every time I got done even fornicating, I just felt like down in, in my spirit like and that's what the holy spirit does it gives you conviction when you do wrong like the holy spirit convicts you and it shows you you know if you keep doing that it's gonna lead to damnation it's gonna lead to uh health issues it could lead to depression or like mental issues you know mental health problems and stuff like that so the holy spirit is definitely one way to know that you're a chosen one and you can't like i said you can't live a certain way no more and you know um i just remember like even before like I, before I knew anything about spirituality or anything like that like I just knew like like when I got high it just didn't feel the same no more bro like when I I used to get high all the time and I used to just live my best life but once I got the Holy Spirit like when I would get high it just wouldn't be the same you know it just wouldn't or when I party and stuff like that like you see the world differently the Holy Spirit lets you see the world differently and that's God you know giving you eyes to see and ears to hear so that was one way that I knew that I was a chosen one like even before I became chosen like I just knew like there were certain things I had to give up. Um, and faith without works is dead. You know, the Bible says that. And so I just knew that, okay, like, even the Bible says, if you do certain things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. So something like washing porn, fornicating, I knew that I had to go. And I didn't even know the Bible back then. I had no idea what the Bible was. And um, so yeah, that was number one. First thing, knowing you're chosen one. Number two would be you're the black sheep of the family. Um, I always been like, look down on in the family and stuff like that not just in my family but like in life in general like i just always every time i try to tell people like especially when i came into the church tell people about god and stuff like that they would just look at me weird and like, especially in my family because i wanted to show them the way and they kind of just like laugh at me and stuff like that and you know oh you're just a conspiracy theorist and stuff like that so they kind of like look down on you and stuff like that when you're a black sheep family, like people look down on you or you're crazy so you just keep things to yourself and it sucks because you have no one really to talk to because most people in this world are kind of like lost like like we were once lost you know so i don't allow that to get me puffed up and be prideful because i understand i was like them before too you know i thought it was just oh you're just a conspiracy theorist or you're just crazy but you know it's only god who gives us eyes to see and ears to hear so you know becoming the black sheep of the family is another sign that you're a chosen one um you're like the only one in the family who kind of can see the world for what it is and um they kind of like look down on you and stuff like that or like whenever you accomplish something in life like they don't really give you your credit and stuff like that so it's whatever because we know that being chosen by god is much better than being chosen by the people because best believe you could be chosen by god but you also could be chosen by the devil you know these celebrities y'all see getting promoted all the time in mainstream media chosen by the devil so um us chosen ones by god another, another number three another way to be know that you're chosen by god is that you're set apart um you no longer the things of this world no longer intrigue you like you don't you don't really care no more you don't really care like what this world has to offer and um you know like let's say if you're at a party and stuff like that like you kind of just don't it's not the same no more like you have that set apart spirit in you you know like you don't really you're chosen out of this world god the bible says that god chose us out of this world so when you do things like worldly and stuff like that it just is not the same no more when you were of the world you know and you start to notice like being a chosen one like a lot of people hate you you know, just because the light that shines in you, which is the light of Christ, people like get bothered by that. Like the demons and the demons in the first realm too, like they get bothered by, you know, you know, seeing your light 
And it's, they even know you're chosen before you become chosen, man. People are hating on you, looking down on you, talking down on you. Like, they know you're chosen before you know you're chosen. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just light in Christ in you, and they just don't understand. The Bible even says something like the darkness doesn't comprehend the light. And, uh, you know, we go through spiritual warfare and stuff like that. Another sign you're a chosen one, you go through spiritual warfare, and it's because you're doing the right thing. Okay, the devil doesn't attack the people who are in darkness. You know, he, he lets them be comfortable. But the minute they try to escape the darkness, you get attacked. Why is that? Why is that? Because the devil doesn't want you to become to what God created you to be, your purpose, your God-given purpose, because that's going to be your best version of yourself. He wants you to be depressed, social anxiety, um, suicidal thoughts, uh, all these mental health issues. He wants to be stuck there. You know, he wants to be stuck with uh, bipolar, taking meds and stuff like that. He doesn't want you to reach, you know, your higher self, which is spirituality through the Holy Spirit. You know, so he continues attacking. That's how you know you're a chosen one. You always get attacked by the devil because you're trying to do what's righteous. You know, when back when you were in the world doing worldly things, you didn't really get attacked. But now when you try to do the right thing, you just always get attacked. So that's another way you know you're chosen because, like I said, the devil doesn't bother. There's like a saying that thieves don't break into empty homes. You know, there's nothing for a thief to steal. But he kind of he just does steal for those who are on on the right path, a narrow path. So he will try to mess with them and so like that. And you know, yeah, the devil's always like. He uses people we love the most and like kind of like him, you know, it can hurt us because if he uses like a random person on the street, we don't care because we don't even know that person. You know, it's just like a random person, like random people in the comments hating, like I don't care because I don't even know them. But the people who I actually know, like I know for years and like that and know in real life and chill together and stuff like that, that kind of hurt. That's different, you know, because it's like, dang, like we had some type of mutual trust. And they don't even know that they're being used by, you know, the demons and stuff like that. Like the uh, spiritual, the spiritual realm, the uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, uh, if only we could see the spiritual realm fully, we would understand things uh, a lot different. We would see the world a lot different and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, another way to know you are a chosen one is that people have told you when you're younger. You know, people have told you. Like, I remember I was at church. Like, I'll never forget this. It was, like, in Oakland, California. It was right by Lake Moret. It was, like, kind of in the hood. And it, um, it was an African. My mom's African. She's a rich man, So I never went to church. My mom would beg me to go to church. Like, and I remember I didn't go to church for that time. For like I don't go to church no more. But um, I didn't go to church prior to that. Like, maybe, like, years. You know, I think the last time when I got baptized was, like, maybe, like, two, three years ago. But she was begging me to go. And I really didn't want to go. But for whatever reason... The spirit just led me to go to it, you know? Like, I just, all right, I just went. And so we're at the church, and they're speaking Tigrinya, which is an Af African language. I don't know what they're saying, you know? The only Tigrinya language I know is, like, cuss words and stuff. But um, so we're there at the church, and, like, uh, I guess there, and you could feel, like, the presence in that church. Like, you could feel the Holy Spirit. Like, even though back then, I didn't even know what that was. But you could feel, like, these men were on fire. Like, you, you could feel it. You could, you could just tell, like, like, even back then, I had no idea what anything, like, anything spiritual and stuff like that. I didn't even know what the Bible was. I did, what the, I did know what the Bible was. I did believe in God and stuff. I knew what God was, but I didn't know about spiritual things, you know? I didn't know what a prophet was. I didn't know stuff like that. So, um, we're in there, and I guess, like, the prophets were, like, prophesizing, like, what people are going to become and stuff like that, or, like, whatever their life is going to be. I'm not sure exactly, but my mom was like, go, go, but I didn't want to go. Like, I was like, nah, like, there's a lot of people there, and, like, you know, like, I was watching porn, so I had social anxiety. Like, I'm kind of, like, afraid back then. And not just porn, masturbating, and stuff like that. So I, I didn't want to go. Like, you know, I didn't want, like, you know, I, I didn't like the attention back then. I still don't, but not because of the social anxiety. I don't really like attention. I don't, whatever. But so my mom was like, go, go. And then my mom's friends, like, hyping me up. And they're all just like, go, go. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, so I just went. And uh, there's, like, a line. And some girl was getting, like, demons delivered off of her like she was going like tripping out and i think like, she was getting delivered or something like that and she was just crying afterwards too and uh, i guess like they're like, like casting demons i'm telling you these people were fired up like you could you could feel it you could feel the presence and stuff so um they put their hand on my head or something like that and usually when they when they would touch people people would be, like shake or like I, maybe it's a demon or something i don't know people would like, get like afraid when they touch them but when they touched me i was just i was just straight you know like i think he put my hand in, in my head or something like that and he's like, wow, wow. And he was speaking the, the African language, the Tigrinya language. I didn't know what he said. So I, I went back to my, I went back to sit down uh, the, on the bench. And then I was like, mom, what did he say? What did he say? He's like, oh, wow. He's like, wow. My mom was like shocked. She's like, she said, she said that you're going to be like a prophet or something like that. And uh, I didn't know what a prophet was back then. When she told me that, I was like, what does that mean? And I looked it up. I, went home, I remember I went home that night and I, went, I looked it up. I was like, the prophet. So I was like, what the heck? 
And I didn't really know anything about the Bible and stuff like that. I didn't know that God was going to use me in the future. I had no idea. Back then, I was selling weed, smoking weed. You know, I was in, I was in darkness, so I didn't know what she meant by that. And, um, yeah, man, that was that was probably one of the most crazy experiences. Like, people would always tell me, my grandma would always tell me to my, to my mom, like, oh, he's going to become something. And, like, my mom, my grandma was really, really, like, religious and stuff like that. She, like, she would read her Bible every single day, like. I don't remember a day where I remember her not reading the Bible. So she was really like on fire and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so that's how you know you are a chosen one. Your love of God, you being the black sheep. People told you from your younger age, you know, that you were going to become something spiritual, not just like of the world, like being a millionaire and stuff like that. And not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying like, and like for God could use you to save, you know, save souls and stuff like that. So. I didn't really know that at the time, but now I understand. Even the Bible says that uh, he who wins souls is wise or something like that. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. It's like in Proverbs 11 or something like that. Um, you have the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which convicts you uh, to how you're living a certain lifestyle and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, there was a time when I would watch porn, masturbate, fornicate, like, like sin pretty much. And like I wouldn't feel any wrong. Like I would feel like, you know? I didn't feel any wrong, but when the minute I got the Holy Spirit, and I believe I asked God, I pray, and people ask me, how do you get the Holy Spirit? I asked God, I remember I prayed on my knees. I was in Las Vegas, I was in the hotel, and um, I just knew, like I had a conscience. Everyone has a conscience, knowing right and, know, right and wrong, good and bad. And I remember I just prayed to God, and I, you know, I told him like, you know, to help me, get, you know, help me. And as I asked him to help me, he gave me the Holy Spirit. At the time, I didn't know. But for those who want to know, if you, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you got to get on your knees, pray, and ask God for it, and he will give it to you. I believe that's in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, uh, King James Version. And, uh, and also, it's um, number five was, you know, you go through spiritual warfare, the devil's always attacking you constantly. Especially if you're on fire, he's trying to put your fire out. The devil doesn't want you to be on fire for God. He doesn't want you reading the, your word, the word of God. He doesn't want you meditating on the word. Uh, he doesn't want you praying, you know, especially he doesn't want you praying. Uh, he doesn't want you on the right path, man. So he's going to use people to try to get lead you astray, falsely accuse you, slander you, hate on you, gossip about you. Uh, it's all just games. It's all just games he'll play. And he'll use these weak vessels, these organic portals. Uh, the people who are in darkness, he'll use them. And they'll have no idea why. You know, they have no idea why they keep on attacking you. So those are five signs you are a chosen one. Oh, also, a bonus one is, um, well, I think I already said it, but, like, it was how, like, people don't really give you credit when you do things in life, like, like godly things like righteous things that people don't really you know and it's not like you want their approval or anything like that but it's just like you would think like the people who wanted you to be good lead to god they don't really give you you know the, the roses while you're alive or something like that you know and also you know uh reading the bible i realized you no know, my ancestors are the israelites the real you know people of the book you know the chosen people i think that's in deuteronomy Deut chapter 7 verse 6 to, to 8 you know like they call us African-Americans, but that's a byword, you know? We're really the children of Israel. So that really hit me too when I was young, or I think it was 2014 when I saw the, that chart or something like that. And um, yeah, man, all praise to the most high, man. If you guys learned something in this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, or leave in the comments too. Let me know, like, what are some signs too? I'm pretty sure there's more than five. There's definitely more than five, but these are just things that came off the top of my mind. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Peace.